On this week's show, we're looking at how the art of flair is making a huge comeback behind premium bars and how you can be at the forefront of this trend. Welcome to the BartenderHQ.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at BartenderHQ. Here's your host, David Scooby Sangway. Over the past few years, while flair has still flourished in the competition scene, with the moves getting consistently harder and more technical, seeing real world working flair to a good standard in the wild seems to have declined. Of course, there are some brands, most notably TGI Fridays of the UK, who have always promoted the skill of their bartenders and, as I see it, have helped to retain the skilled bartenders with their excellent bartender challenge which has gone from strength to strength over the years. The UK final of the bartender challenge in fact took place this week in Liverpool with Russell Ward taking the top spot once again and securing his place in the World Championship later this year. All the best to Russell with his training and we'll hope to get him on the show soon. We tried last year, we couldn't work the dates out. On that subject, uh, the Bartender HQ podcast is now just over one year old. Uh, We launched back in September the 10th in 2014. I think we've only missed one or two shows since then. Of course, over the year, I've learned a lot more about the tech side of things. We've added the video recordings, the YouTube, and I'm actually working up an auto queue at the moment. It's something that I uh, wrote earlier, and I want to thank all the guests that we've had on the show before. So we've had uh, Julia and Chris from the A Bar Above podcast. We've had uh, Brian Weber from uh, Bartender Journey. We've had... Um, Russell Davis, obviously from Bar Rescue over in the US. We've had Louis Lavella, we've had Tom Dyer, who's the uh, the reigning World Flare Champion at the Roadhouse. It's been an awesome year, and we'll be doing even more great stuff in the coming years. Coming up soon, I have guests scheduled from one iconic brand in the spirit space, another uh, brand new spirit interview, um, where we'll be talking to the uh, the owner about how he created a spirit completely from scratch. We also launched the Flare Project a couple of months ago, our crowdsourcing project to create a Flare routine from moves submitted by bartenders all over the world. Uh, I entered my first competition of the project a few weeks back, the Masters of Flare, and took the honour of Best of the Midlands, so look out for the Flare Project kicking into high gear in the next month, as my change in job lets me spend far more time with both Bartender HQ and the Flare Project. Now I'm still looking for a lot more submissions, so if you want to help out and be a part of the Flare Project, shoot your video. Don't worry about the quality, smartphone footage is absolutely fine, just please make sure it's landscape. And then drop me an email link on david at bartenderhq.com and you'll be a part of it. Now the rise of craft flare. Now there have been a lot of videos going pretty viral on Facebook of a guy by the name of Yevgeny Sashkin. Sorry about the way I've just pronounced that for you. Um, who's got an amazing style of, uh, with his flair and a style that I'm calling craft flair. It's really pared back and has all of the huge showy moves taken out in preference of small, incredibly precise jigger bumps, spoon flourishes, shaker flair and really, really accurate pause. In a second video from him, you'll see him performing eight short and sweet moves with a pair of shakers and cheetah tins, um, each unique and almost impossible to follow. It's so fast. It's this kind of uh, stealth flair that if you're in the bar relaxing and talking to a friend, uh, you might just catch it out of the corner of your eye and wonder what you just saw. The guy is really inspirational and he's getting a huge amount of attention online at the moment. This kind of flair is really interesting to me as it's all super usable. I've talked in the past about the way that flair is going and it seems to me that the huge exhibition routines have very little to do with actually being a good flair bartender in the sense that your guests at the bar will never see you doing these six tin one bottle splits while making them a nice Negroni, for example. Um, It's an incredibly impressive skill of itself, but everyone is pushing what's possible in the uh, competition environment. It doesn't necessarily lead to better service or shows for your guests, Um, especially when competitors are pre-pouring their drink ingredients into glasses before they perform and then just pouring everything in uh, to save just that little bit of extra time for one more huge six or seven item move. So at what point does flair leave bartending behind? When you use moves that you use in a competition that you'd have no chance of ever being used uh, behind a bar in service, I think it stops being about bartending and it becomes pure flair. Uh, Now, the whole point of flair bartending was that you're adding flair to the way that you bartend and entertaining your guests all the way. Now for many years, uh, there was the same kind of thought about the delineation between what was flair bartending, what was juggling, 
and should three bottle cascades be penalised in competition bartending? I mean, there's certainly a skill to being able to juggle three glass bottles, yes. Uh, the, the grip's different to club juggling, and the majority of bartenders would throw doubles, whereas most jugglers would throw underhand singles with clubs. But juggling is kind of juggling when it comes down to it. The three bottle cascade doesn't really progress making the drink, but it develops into a lot of multiple item flair that we do see today. Um, cascades seem to be a lot more popular among the American bartenders than in Europe, uh, though that's probably more um, thanks to the advent of things like YouTube and other online video that nowadays you can't really tell where someone's from just by the style of their flair. Um, everyone can see every move that's ever been created on YouTube pretty much and, and, and so the, the lines kind of blur. Not a bad thing, but um, there is a lot more of this juggling style uh, routine coming out now. Now, in London, specific competitions were even set up like the Old School Yards events which only allowed you to use two items at a time uh, kind of to combat the rise of the juggling and move it back a little bit more towards the smooth moves and the creativity within the limit of the competition. Now, I want to thank Eddie Waits for creating that one. I think Tom Dyer took it over at one point, uh, but it was an awesome comp that I entered just before going out to Dubai, actually. But what do you think? Uh, will bartending niche down and have individual competitions for different styles of bartending under the heading of flair? Will exhibition become more of a sport, for the lack of a better term, and, and sort of start to uh, distance itself from the bartending side of things, will flair be a separate thing to bartending or will it kind of, will we reintegrate the flair stuff and make it all back to being part of one thing? Should bartenders at a flair competition for example have uh, some sort of an assessment that is of their bartending skill in general? So should flair competitions also test the competency of bartenders and their skills or actually serving guests as well as how many items they can flair with all at once? I'd love to know your thoughts on the idea. Uh, but as usual guys, one of the best things about um, working in the bar industry is the people that you meet and the social aspect. So please, don't be a stranger. Uh, come and join the conversation on our Facebook page and on the Worldwide Bartender Community on Facebook. Post your videos, I'd love to see them. Uh, join us on Twitter, let me know what you think of the show. I'm going to be building a practice bar over the next couple of weeks, so keep an eye on Instagram to see how all of that goes. And if there's something you want to ask me, go right ahead and ask. You can leave me a voicemail via the website, you can email me, david at bartenderhq.com, or post a video question on the Facebook page. If you've got a great story that you want to share about bartending, about uh, an awesome drink that you guys serve in your bar, if you've got anything that you want me to feature on the show, or you've got a question to ask, please just get in touch and I would love to hear from you. Until next time guys, I've been David Sangwell for the BartenderHQ.com podcast, and I'll see you guys again next week. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the BartenderHQ.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at BartenderHQ.